all start. We just don't know. Roger. Roger. Television ready? This is the August meeting of the Cape Elizabeth School Board. The first item on the agenda is adjustment to the agenda. I do not know of any. Does anybody else? Dr. Pelletier? No, uh, Mr. Chairman, I do not have any adjustments this evening. Are there any uh, members of the public that would like to comment on uh, any items on or not on the agenda? Seeing none, we'll move on to item two, which is approval of the minutes of the school board meeting held on uh, meetings held on June 11th and June 12th. Do I have a motion that the uh, minutes be approved as submitted? I understand actually that there's some observations on the uh, on the minutes. Uh, but let's have a motion uh, that they be approved and then during discussion we can have amendments, if any. I move that the minutes be approved. Second? Second. Second, okay, moved and seconded. Any comments on the, uh, the minutes? Let's start with the uh, June 11th meeting. Any comments? I believe under um, num article number five, consideration of requests by the superintendent to enter executive session when we came out of executive session, I believe that John Holt moved to give the business manager, D. Little Bell, a three-year contract and not a two-year contract. Your recollection? Three. Three. Yes. Okay. The, uh, so we'll uh, move that. Any, any uh, other changes? I also believe under committee assignments, that you you uh, approved or approved other assignments. One was a um, legislative li liaison, a contact person, which was myself. Yeah. One was a board appointment to the um, uh, community community team. team. <laughs> that was myself, and I believe there was a co-curricular. Connie, do you uh, recall who I'll was? Does anybody recall who was appointed as co-curricular? <coughs> I know I'm athletic. Uh, <laughs> appointment. Uh, well, it's athletic co-curricular. I believe it's one that they are both the same. Oh, really? No, I, I thought athletic was uh, was a separate, separate appointment from co-curricular. Separate committee. Yes. Yes. They're different. Co They're co-curricular. It's a different appointment. And the athletic staff, no. That's but we don't know who uh, who it was? No. We'll be ch happy to check the notes. I'll check my notes. Is that okay. Break it I next time. Yeah. Well, do you all agree that uh, if we she finds out who it is, that uh, that appointment stands and that, that the minutes be corrected to reflect that? Yes. Okay. So any other comments on the minutes? Uh, yes, under election of a chairperson. Uh, it says there was no discussion and the board approved with a vote of four to zero with one abstention. Is that correct? Which was myself. Which I was the elected the <laughs> official. Right. Thank you. Thank you, Loretta. Any other changes? Okay. Uh, all in favor of approving the minutes as submitted with the amendments that we've just discussed. Okay. The business manager's report. D? What I'd like to do tonight is kind of highlight the, the activity or the summer projects that we are currently doing and in September is, is have on paper for you people and, and the public a, a list of the projects with the uh, budgeted costs and what the actuals came out to be. Some of these are still ongoing. I'd like to start with the uh, energy conservation. We did go out to bid. And we did receive three bids for the energy management system. Uh, it wasn't a clear, a clear cut as to, you know, as to uh, the low bid. It's, what we did was we set up a, uh, a budget format for the, for the project. And the three bidders came in and gave us 
what they could do for us for that kind of money. In other words, they said, well, we can provide 55 points, a point may, being probably a thermostat in one section of the building or, you know, versus a thermostat outside, you know, for, for sensors and stuff like that. So we, we did sign and uh, with main control, and we did order a Barbara Coleman energy management system. Uh, the price of the system was fifty-four, fifty-five thousand uh, dollars to be installed and operated and online, hopefully by October first this this year. Uh, we did also have in that same grant money. We did also uh, award the steam traps to uh, another vendor, and that's ongoing. There uh, we have a lot of tra uh, traps in the district that are that are leaking, and you know the steam just goes out of, the, out of the system. We did also do uh, a uh, lighting project at the line school and also a, a high school emergency light project and at the same time we did apply through the state of Maine for a, a grant. We did receive a grant for $9,185 and that looking at the numbers tonight briefly it should cover the cost of both the light lighting projects so that should that money I think we had set aside $12,000 that should stay in the budget. Uh, as far as the roofs, we, it's going to be closed because there's still two big roofs. The IA roof at the high school and the CAF wing at the high school has not been done to date. Uh, hopefully, they'll be completed by the start of school. If not, they're going to do the, the CAF roof first and, and possibly hold the IA roof for the last thing to do. Uh, they're doing, right now the progress is great. That They've had a couple bad, bad weeks of rain, I guess. When it rained, it, it rained and they were unable to, to get to the roofs. The bigger roofs were the, uh, the middle school roofs where they had to tear off the existing material on the roofs and that took quite a long time. Uh, as far as the section D wing at the middle school where we did a truss roof, uh, that is, I'd say 90, 95% complete. The only thing left to do there is we have to uh, extend the chimney to about a foot and a half to two feet above the roof line. So that's to be started, I believe, tomorrow. Uh, the portable classroom is 99% complete. There's just a few odds and ends, you know, touch up here and there that need to be done. We've started moving into the portable classroom. We've set up some of the classes. Uh, the middle school third floor renovations, we've, we've taken that old area. We've taken uh, three decent sized or huge classrooms and we converted them to five classrooms, four, four adequate size and one that could be used for a, a special ed room or whatever. That is 100% done. Uh, the handicap, uh, as far as we get three bathrooms in process, uh, are in progress as far as being 50% uh, complete, those will be done before school starts. Uh, we've done one, two, three, three uh, ramps to access the middle school building. We had all kinds of ramps inside throughout the building, but you couldn't get in, into the building, so that was a problem. And we will, we will uh, next week or possibly th this week uh, do a uh, a uh, a ramp from the cafeteria door in the back or in the rear to the uh, playground, and also connecting the uh, the uh, gym lobby in the middle school to that same ramp going to the playground. So there's going to be a, a walkway along the building that's going to be like 100 150 feet or something. Mm -hmm. uh, the high school, the phone system at the high school has been installed. Uh, I talked to Gary today. It's, it's about 90, 95% complete. And at, at this point, I think I'd like to, to thank uh, Jane Greer, uh, a citizen in Cape Elizabeth that donated a lot of her time into the, uh, into the system. And she kind of guided myself and Frank and Gary and a few other people as to, you know, the type of system we were looking for, she, she kind of uh, sat with us and interviewed the, the different bidders and what they could offer for the, for the money and the lady was super. She spent a lot of time and I'd like to thank her personally. Any relation to you? No? Coincidence? Is, is she a, some kind of uh, communication specialist? Or? With you and him. Okay. So she knew what she was talking about a lot better than we all did. Sounds like we ought to send her a commemorative plaque. Yeah, the lady was super. She did a lot of work. Thank you. At least uh, a thank you note. Yes. I know. Uh, we did have uh, 11 
11 doors at the middle school and uh, Bond Cove Lent that were replaced. Uh, this was all through the, the bond issue. Those are complete. Uh, at the high school, we had a problem last uh, spring with the uh, 3,000 gallon hot water tank that leaked and the state came in and did an asbestos abatement project for us. Come to find out in, in June or July, when in June when the uh, we were going to have the tank relined and recoded and, and everything, uh, the tank was was poorly pitted on the inside. It was really uh, they could have done the job, but it went to last. So we went out to to bid and we got uh, three thousand gallon tank. We got prices of thirty four, thirty five thousand dollars for the tank. We said, well, so another company came up and they, we reduced the size of the tank. We went to a thousand six gallon tank and we increased the output of the burners. That produces 2,400 gallons of hot water an hour. The tank is on order. It will not be in place come the first day of school. However, the delivery date of the tank is, uh, get it here somewhere. I believe it's like the 7th of September. They will work through the weekend if necessary to install it and get us online. So hopefully that Monday or Tuesday after the first week of school, the hot water tank will be in place. We've talked to the cafeteria people. We've notified you know, other people. Uh, it's one of those things. What's the other the, tank. What's the cost of it? 18,000, 18,500 roughly. Installed, insulated, everything. That's the removal of the other one. Had that been budgeted? No. What we're planning to do, and I've talked to Dr. Pelletier about this, is we, on the, on the roof bid and the, the lights and everything else, the bond issues, we went out to bid on the roofs and we we came in with a, a, a low bid of $247,000 for 16 roofs and we had budget like 300 plus. So, you know, but however, we'd like to keep as much of that money available because next year we do need to do the, the two oil tanks at a cost of $125,000. We will not be going back to another bond issue, so whatever you know, we got left, we're going to pull all the money and try to finance those two, uh, those two tanks. Uh, as far as uh, school lunch, we did get a grant. We had applied for a grant in uh, roughly April, I believe, for equipment. And the state did award us $5,000, or the maximum they could in, in June or July. We did order and uh, purchase a freezer, uh, an oven, and a refrigerator for the Pond Cove and Middle School. But there's three pieces of equipment at a cost of $7,870. So we applied that 5000 towards that. We did have a, the state did come in in, uh, in the middle school in July to do an, an asbestos abatement project for us. We could not run the, uh, the, uh, the, the lights, the power, and the uh, sprinkler system from the main building to the portable because the ceilings were asbestos. So we couldn't move them or touch them or whatever. So the state did come in. They did a, a week, well, 10-day project, roughly. They did abate all the ceiling tiles on the Section D4 so we could accommodate us to, to run the uh, whatever, the pipes and the power. That's been done. They're gone. Uh, the tennis courts are finally done. That's been a, a year-long project. We started last August with that. We met last uh, Thursday. We had a, not Wednesday, we had a walkthrough and, you know, the, except for the, the grass not growing in certain places, you know, everything is in tip-top shape. They did do a, a, a good job. And that's all I have. Any Mr. questions? Mr. Chairman, I have some questions. Um, I believe when, when the asbestos abatement was taking place, that we had some torrential rains that caused questionable damage and you weren't able to get in to, find, to assess that. What, what came about when you finally got in there? Uh, there was two abatements. The second abatement I would like to talk to you people in the executive session about. It's, it's done. The, the damage, it's in the hands of insurance companies, all I can say right now. Okay. I think I just want to know specifically what you found. I what was found? Okay, the, the, the water came down the columns of the existing building and caused uh, two, four, two, uh, two rooms to have the four tiles lift. 
We had uh, eight rooms, four upstairs, four downstairs, where we had to abate the, the first two rows of tiles closest to the windows. We had the hallway, the whole hallway had to be abated because of the, the tiles were lifting. Uh, what we've done, the, the, the mastic was positive as far as the test came out. Uh, so what we did in order to save a lot of time and you know to, not to have to sandblast and all this uh, thing, we, we uh, put carpets in the uh, Section D hallway in the first floor and in two classrooms. Carpets are a form of encapsulation? Well, no, all we need to do, well, it, it covers it, period. But what we need to do now is go to our O&M plan, uh, observe and maintain plan, and we just note make a, a notation that on such and such a date we put carpets over I mean there's still asbestos underneath don't get me right. wrong but it's at least it's contained or covered so you know we're, we're in regulation by doing that it just saved us probably a couple weeks we wouldn't have been ready for school to start okay is it one contractor that's doing all the roofs for the whole district or is it by no. building that one roof the one roof was a trust roof. That's a separate contractor than the than the uh, rubberized roofs. Okay, so the rubberized roofs that are being done at the the high school are a different contractor yeah. than yeah. the one done. Because yeah. I just from observation, I've seen piles of roofing mm. since almost school let out, and I was just concerned when they addressed of getting to those roofs. What happened on that? I think Charlie is that. Uh, the low bidder being uh, Demons Roofing out of Portland uh, hired a, a crane for a whole day. He had 18 truckloads of whether it be the, uh, the roofing membrane or whether it be the, uh, the insulation or the glue or whatever, and they just piled it onto the roofs as they felt they needed it. So that way, I mean, the, to him it was a cost saving. Instead of having a crane there, you know, probably for three weeks or whatever, he had one day. So this work, work will be continuing after school starts? Hopefully, hopefully. The way I talked to, when Gary and I talked to this student from my house is that by the start of school, the possibility of one roof being not complete is, is a good chance. Okay, my concern is ch child safety or student yes, safety. so is mine. Okay. And one other question concerning the school lunch program. We had addressed in our workshop about going out for more competitive bidding and that type of thing on supplies. Mm -hmm. Has any of those suggestions been implemented? Yeah, what we've done is uh, I've talked to, to, to Sue, Mrs. King, and on the, the director, and we've, she's met with the co-op. I've, I had two prices on a milk bid. I ran it by our attorney, and we were kind of committed to the co-op's milk bid price, so we stay with the co-op. We just can't say, well, the price is lower on the outside, then next year if it's higher, you know, we can't play that game. Why Either not? Are we under contract? Yep. Yeah. The co-op as a whole is under contract. The, the price of milk is not that bad this year. Uh, it's, as far as the food buying, I mean, we're changing some of our techniques, but a lot of it will be bought through the co-op. I think where we have to change our techniques is, is, is our menus. We have to look at our menus and be probably more consistent and say that whatever is offered at uh, Pond Cove will, or Lunt will be offered at the middle school in the hot lunch so we can buy uh, a bigger quantity of that certain product and hopefully get a better price. Uh, other ways, I think we need to look at our salad bar and uh, I, for one, don't feel we can offer a salad bar at the regular price of a hot lunch. I think there ought to be a, a, an upcharge, a quarter or whatever it may be, to the, the kids that do want the salad bar. Uh, tonight you're gonna be asked to, to vote on a, uh, the state has authorized us or told us we could up our, our uh, K-8 uh, hot lunch prices to $1.35. We want to, to uh, to make that, you know, uh, Okay, I'll address, I have some other questions pertaining to that, but I'll address it at sure. that time. 
I don't have all the answers for school lunch. We're still working on the school lunch uh, concerns. Okay, one other question. You said there were three outside accesses. Where are those accesses? At the middle school? Oh, uh, one's coming into the uh, intermediate unit right by the principal's, assistant principal's office. One is by the middle school uh, principal's office. And one is down the uh, section D wing. Okay. Thank you. You're welcome. Is that the end of your report, Dean? That's it. Any other questions? Thank you. Dr. Pelletier, superintendent's report. I, uh, this is uh, preliminary. Uh, I just wanted to uh, announce to uh, the board and the public that uh, we will be discussing this week in the Administrative Council workshop uh, goals and objectives and strategies for the following year and uh, I wanted to take this opportunity. That's going to be on the 23rd and 24th, and we've invited the board to spend some time with us after the administrators have done this. Uh, also in the town report, I uh, this year uh, did a four-year recap of uh, goals and objectives and accomplishments and uh, indicated what I thought uh, we would have to look forward to in the next uh, two years particularly, and some of the difficulties that uh, might arise in terms of finances. But I just alert the board at this point, uh, when you join us, and I hope the entire board will be able to do so, that uh, those are the areas uh, hopefully we'll be discussing. And uh, this is just uh, an opportunity to alert you. So that's all I have, uh, Mr. Chairman, at this point. And hopefully uh, I can recap and make a report on this in September mm -hmm. when the board's had their input and the administrators have had an input as well. Thank you. The next item is uh, the board chairman's report. However, the first item on that uh, is the career ladder uh, study committee report, which is not the board chairman, it's Charlie and Jan. And Charlie, I reached you on the phone, Jan, I'm you're not answering around 6 o'clock, <laughs> which is okay with me, but I know Charlie's prepared to speak on this subject, and uh, so why don't we let Charlie go first, and then you can add to his comments. Okay, thank you. Uh, the Career Ladder Study Committee has met twice since school was let out. We met on June 18th, and we have just met this past week on August 16th. Uh, Mary Bruns was elected chairman and she will also be maintain the records for the committee. Um, the, there were things, there were preliminary discussions of issues that, that the committee as a whole wanted to address. Um, there was a Cape Elizabeth Teachers Association survey done in close of last year. Um, those some of those findings were discussed and a formalized report will be presented to the committee when they have all their data together. Um, some of the things discussed for possible discussion of future meetings are evaluations, career ladder versus index, and school level, level differences, uh, the impact on teacher staff, index versus career ladder, uh, structure of the support teams and the financial support of the cost of the career ladder. Our next meeting, which is in September, will address essentially the philosophy of career ladder. And from that point on, we will we'll break into various committees to discuss some of these other issues. We hope to present a, a preliminary report to the board in December and a completed report by February. Thank you. Thank you. The next item is uh, 1990-91 budget procedures. Uh, the ink is barely dry on last year's budget, and yet we have already started in a very preliminary way on next year's budget, and uh, more than that, in designing some techniques so that we can analyze uh, the effect of some of our decisions uh, over a three to five year time span. I had a meeting with the Administrative Council uh, a few weeks ago, which was the first step in that direction, and 
discussed with them some of uh, my ideas and some of theirs as to how uh, each uh, member of the Administrative Council could begin that process. Uh, and we're going to try to set up a uniform computer program. Uh, some already know how to, uh, to use a, a PC and others uh, are uh, already working on becoming computer literate in that particular area. We're going to, uh, and uh, the Administrative Council is going to meet next Friday uh, and uh, discuss that subject uh, among themselves. That's about as far as we've gotten. Uh, it's probably a record for starting a uh, budget uh, process uh, when, uh, you know, two months after finishing the previous one. But uh, we think it's very important to do it this year and to have in place techniques so that we can uh, do what's called sensitivity analysis uh, on certain types of decisions. And I'll quote some examples, and I certainly don't want to <laughs> anybody to think that I'm, uh, or any of us are uh, sending up uh, trial balloons. Uh, but an example of sensitivity analysis is when you say, what would it look like if we changed our class size? Uh, and you punch a button and you change a class uh, size in a certain grade from uh, 8 to 12. I'll pick an example which doesn't fall into any grades that we have here. Uh, and you see how much uh, uh, that, uh, what the result of that is in, on the budget, or how that affects the budget. So we've started on that process uh, early, and uh, it's our intention to uh, keep uh, everybody, particularly the public, uh, advised as to, to what's going on in that area. The, any questions on that, incidentally, from uh, any no, of you? Not me, no. No? No, not just a slid in here. Uh, not so subtly five minutes ago, and I have no questions. Okay. Anybody else? Okay. The next I have, item. I have one question. Yes, sure. On, on these computer programs, these would be computers that are in each administrator's office that would have the same program, or, was, or is this originating from the central office? Well, the, the ideal, in my opinion, would be to uh, decide on either a Macintosh-based uh, program or an Apple II or 2GS-based program. Uh, and conceivably both, and we haven't, uh, at least nobody has gotten back to me on, uh, with a precise inventory of what computers they have access to in, uh, in their various offices. Uh, I know that Frank has a Macintosh. Uh, I think, Barbara, you have an Apple II. Uh, D, Apple II. you have an Apple II. Uh, and we're just in the process of deciding what kind of uh, software uh, to use. but. A typical example would be the Excel spreadsheet program, which uh, everybody says is about the best on the Macintosh. But we might have some of our uh, uh, analysts, as I'll call them, uh, working on an Apple II, and then somebody will put it onto a larger program, put their work onto a larger program. Uh, but we're just getting started on that, and uh, I'm sure that uh, we will be talking with the Administrative Council. Um, in fact, I think we have a scheduled have meeting a scheduled for meeting. September, which right. we, we scheduled at that uh, meeting that I attended. One meeting a month. Yeah. That's for starters, one meeting a month. As we get closer to the date, it will be more often than that. Um, any other questions on that subject? Old business. The policy of post-secondary enrollment options, the second reading. Yes, there were some questions, Mr. Chairman, on this, and we were able to call the State Department, and I recently read the law that was sent to me two days ago, and uh, we now have the information. The only legitimate schools that youngsters can attend are public university systems and or vocational schools. So uh, that answers the question, could you go to Bates or Colby? <coughs> You could not. You'd have to go to the university system and, and or the tech school. So uh, I'd like to have this constitute the second reading so that we can apply for funds that we spent last year along these lines. Okay, we need a motion to that effect, I believe. 
been moved. Second. Second. Any discussion? If that's true, then wouldn't it be helpful for many years in the future when uh, perhaps this wasn't clear and it wasn't the same board that had made this, this policy decision to, uh, in the second paragraph where it says students from Cape Elizabeth High School may earn credits toward graduation by taking courses from public two-year and four-year post-secondary institutions, and at that time include within the state of Maine, such as the University of Maine system or the Vocational Technical Institute. And that makes it clear that it would have to be a Maine public institution. That was my concern, more so than, than a private, was that it'd be mm -hmm. within the state of Maine. We could change that. I think we could change just that, and we don't need an words. additional reading for that. So, right. um, Mr. Chairman, I move to amend my motion to include that. First. Thank you, Charlie. I was just wondering how I was going to. Uh, <laughs> and I'd like to second that. Okay. All in, any other discussion? All in favor? That's the amendment. Charlie. Now this is oh, thank you. Thank you, Madam Chair. <laughs> <laughs> okay, now uh, we, we, we have to uh, we have to have a, we have to go back to the motion, right? Okay. All in favor? All opposed? Okay. Thank you. D. New business. We need a uh, a, a motion to raise the. Uh, Hot lunch program from K to eight, from $1.25 to $1.35 for students, and from $2 to $2.20 for adults, effective the first day of school. Is this the maximum permitted by the state? This is the maximum. We just got a letter last uh, Wednesday, I believe. It was $1.25, and everybody's at the max. You just, you just can't uh, charge any more than the, than the state uh, How does this allows. affect the, the budget that you had in there next year if you were allowed to go up another? I believe when we had when we had run some preliminaries with ten cents, you're talking like five to six thousand dollars. Five, six thousand different, and you had budgeted for a deficit for 1990-91 of how much? Do you remember? Uh, 25, 20, 25, 25,000 rings a bell. So that'll reduce the deficit to some degree. <coughs> mm -hmm. Do I hear a motion? May I ask a question? Will the price of milk stay the same, or is that also going up? That's not stated in your request. Stay the same. Do I have a motion to that effect? So moved. Second? Second. Second. Any uh, discussion? You had, Mr. Chairman, you had alluded earlier to <coughs> when I asked the question about um, competitive bidding for, for supplies, et cetera, and you had addressed more of a uniform menu in what way is specifically well from what I understand of the program is 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 uh, if Pawn Cove let's say he's having spaghetti one day or whatever it may be that, then middle school doesn't necessarily have the, the same menu I think if we would would uh, coordinate the menus and if you're gonna buy a Hamburg, you might as well buy a, probably a few pounds more and probably get a better price for it. I don't know. We'd have to look at things like that. I th I think we're putting out the, the meals are super. I mean, it's been a 180 degree turnaround. It's it's unbelievable. Participation's way up. I just feel we're we're uh, we have to look at and buy. The fruits are very expensive in the the winter months, and for some, you know, we're buying a lot of fruits at that time of year. We're buying a lot of, you know, the, the, I think we can still put out a, a Class A meal, but we need to, to uh, look at what we're buying. Will this involve more centralized meal preparation, or? No. So the, the, eat the individual schools, as far as the main well, right now, menu, Pond, would prepare their own? True. Right now, Pond Cove does all the, the bacon for the uh, K-8 program. That's going to stay the same because of the facilities. Uh, so who's getting the new stove? Who is? Good question. You told us what, what, was, what you had bought, but you just said between the two schools. Oh, in the fridge. I think Bon Co is getting the new stove. Pretty sure. If, 
freezer and the fridge go to mid, uh, middle school. Thank you. Jan? See, who has the, the final authority, for example, with the salad bar? You mentioned before that you thought that the salad bar should um, be extra over and above the cost of the lunch. Are, who has the final authority to say we're going to charge for the salad bar? The you people, though. I mean, we can recommend to you people. I, th I think Who what's... next to us? Well, no. I guess what I'm saying is <laughs> what we're doing... Sue's been gone the last... <laughs> Sue's been out the last three or four weeks. What, what, we're in, what we're doing right now is we're looking at the menus and trying to put a cost to each of the meals, per se. I just feel that you know the salad bar is over and above. I, th I think it's great. The kids love it in that. But I, th I think for 20 or 25 cents, you know, a quarter makes a lot of difference here in, in the course of a year. We found that out when we did when we had the workshop upstairs, and I just feel that we can still offer a class A meal with or without the salad bar. The salad bar is an option. You want the salad bar? Fine, make it available. But. 20 or 25 cents charge or whatever. Okay, but I, I guess what I'm asking is then before school gets started and everybody gets confused about what's going to cost what and how much money they need to bring, can you not say to uh, the person in charge, we are going to charge for the salad bar this year and yeah. let's, let's do it? Mm -hmm. Hopefully th there is a package going out to the, the kids the is it the first day of school, Barbara? And there is, I think there's four pieces of uh, literature that pertain to the school lunch on that. And I believe one of those will be addressing the, uh, the new rate as far as the, it does address the new rate as far as the dollar thirty-five. And I can talk to Dr. Pelletier and to, to the director and, and suggest that we put something else in there as far as the cost of a salad bar. Will will a meal ticket concept stay in stay in place? I know in the beginning of last year the middle school did not have a, a meal ticket if you wanted to pay for the week. One of the one of the concerns brought up at that workshop was the fact that students would tell their teacher in the morning that they're going to have hot lunch, get to hot lunch and opt for a la carte. Mm. So you sometimes had a lot of excess left over. Uh, in some respects, I think the meal tickets would help to eliminate that if, if money was sent for a week by the parent and the child purchased five meal tickets, you'd have some idea of, of uh, what quantities to produce, et cetera. I believe as the year went, went by, I think we, we probably remedied that. Uh, no? Okay. Does Sue set the a la carte prices? Or is that in, does she work that out with you? She, she and the, uh, the high school, the manager of the school lunch at the high school set the a la carte Because you still have a la carte options available in the middle school also. Yes. Okay. Uh, last year was Sue's first year, yep. is that correct? Do you think, or have you, perhaps you've asked her to to set up a, a budget based on her figures from last year? It seemed like last year she, you know, was just getting acquainted with the program and, and it seems like if she would look at her monthly expenditures and try to set up a, at least a, a general budget, it, it might be helpful for True. her and give us a good idea of what to expect. Because I think we had surprises last year. Oh, I know you did. Which I we've did. tried to uh, account for this year, okay. compensate for, but. No, we'll look into that. And I, th I think the way, w w I'm, I'm going to look at to, uh, to change the way I report to you people as far as the school lunch, because there's too many, it's, it's too easy to, uh, at the end of the month, if, if, you've, if you've paid uh, $15,000 in bill, you might have 15000 outstanding in bills also that are, not, that are not paid. So, I mean, we need to look at the accrual side of it, too. It's very deceiving because I thought we were going to make some money in June. We didn't. We lost some money in June. And you know, my twenty-five thousand dollar loss. We were at, what thirty or thirty-two come May, and we lost another three instead of making another five. So that's an eight thousand dollar swing. Because I was projecting twenty-five thousand. 
so I need to look at the way I report to you people also uh, and look at inventories and look at you know everything right down to the last detail. But my last recollection is that we still don't have an accrual system of accounting where you can show variances from budgeted amounts. I think on the school lunch I can accommodate you people. We can do something there. I, I need to do it anyway because it, it, there's too many unknowns up there. I mean, you, you got to take your your, uh, your accrual as far as the payroll. Uh, I th it's not. It's a two hundred. It's a three hundred thousand dollar program. I think we need we need to do that with school. Well, we, we should be able to do it with the entire budget. It goes back to the point that True. we've made so many times. The standard that I uh, yeah. carried for a while, and then Charlie has picked it up. And uh, yeah. uh, how close are we on that? Uh, we were roughly 100,000 short. No, 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 I mean, the. Uh, I understood that some computer work started today on the town system. Uh, There's so an update going in tomorrow as far as the payroll system. There is uh, a new release by Northern Data as far as what you're talking about, Peter. There, there is a monthly reporting system out there. It hasn't, it's being tested in a few sites. It's not, available to all of the, uh, the users. Uh, once they release, the release was supposed to come out in January if this past uh, 90 year and it hasn't been released yet. So we're working on it. But, I mean, so we're still gonna see our figures uh, on a percentage basis. We've spent X yeah. percentage of our, dollar amount uh, of our total base. budget, but we really have no idea whether we're ahead or behind the target. I think what's this year, from what I've seen to date, is uh, I think we're slightly ahead in expenditures because I, th I think a lot of people were probably leery of the freeze we had in January. And I think it seems like the cash is, uh, the, the bills are coming a lot earlier this year. Well, but that's flying by the seat of the pants. That's not a uh, program that's based on uh, accruals and, uh, and, and budgeting. Uh, I mean, it's nice that you have that sense, but it's not a, it's not a, a modern, up-to-date computer system. True. And like I say, as far as they come out with the software, I mean, it, it's an enhancement we get because we, 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 uh, we participate in whatever software they have. And once they release it, we'll, we'll have the, uh, the user capabilities to, okay. to operate. Uh, I've lost track. Do we have a motion on the table? We do. Um, of course. <laughs> okay. Are we, is there any further discussion? Not as far as the hot lunch. Okay. <laughs> as far as the centralized computer system, yeah. there are a lot of questions. Yes, yes, me too. Uh, but th that's not the agenda item. So all in favor of increasing the, uh, the price of the hot lunch as proposed? Unanimous. If I, Thank you. How, how are you going to communicate this to the parents, Steve? The first day is going to be tough because we usually put out that package the first day. The kids bring it home. So it'll be we part of the first could, day package? We could uh, contact the, the courier. Courier. And, press. Uh, have a Tonight's little Tonight's announcement. We'll announce it in the morning. The principals will put it in their newsletter. Uh, we'll get it around. Okay. Courier comes out. Uh, we have to get If we get it to the courier tomorrow, the courier is coming out. It will be in the courier. Okay, thank you. Because also there will be. Uh, <coughs> Are you going to report on the bus schedule? Yes, uh, we're going to try to report on the bus schedules. I think the courier is going to help us there as well, right? Excuse me, Mr. Chairman. This is no, this important. is this is important. We've been working for a week yeah. on this. We're very pleased that the courier is around. Believe me. Yeah. Okay. The next item on the agenda is uh, consideration of establishing a school space study committee. Uh, I think really what that consists of is appointing a school board member to serve on that committee because the town council uh, has established uh, the committee and there will be seven members. Uh, the chairman will be jointly appointed by the town council and the school board chairpersons. Two citizens uh, will be appointed by the school board, two citizens appointed by the town council one town council member and one school board member. And that committee will study the uh, space needs of the school uh, for the future. So tonight uh, we should appoint, first of all, a member of the school board to serve on that committee. And I have uh, so far one uh, possible volunteer, uh, and that's, uh, that's Charlie. Uh, 
I didn't reach you, and I didn't reach you because I expected to catch you before the meeting started. Do you have any interest in that committee? Hmm. I suppose. I mean, we have, I'm on the uh, negotiation committee this year with Loretta, and I think, I don't know how much time. A lot. It's going to take up from that, and I'd like to be able to give that as much time as possible. Yeah, I mean, Charlie would like to do it. But would you like to do it uh, as well? Yes. <laughs> well, I'll defer. I, I told uh, him I would defer. Oh. If there was another board in member interested, I would defer. This I, is this I, is one of these rare occasions where we <laughs> actually discuss this sort of thing in public. Uh, <laughs> all volunteers take one step back. <laughs> <laughs> That's right. Uh, I have a question, though. Uh, the chairman. Is going to be a citizen or a school board member or town council member or uh, that'll probably be determined once the group gets together well it, it, it's a very good question Jan uh, it says the chairman is going to be jointly appointed by the town council and the school board chairman also the other question I have is there I would think that there would be questions that would come up that um, we would need answers from somebody within the school system itself that, that even a board member might not readily know. And I'm wondering why nobody is on here, you know, the, the superintendent or a principal or, or somebody that might right then be able to answer a question. It's my understanding that uh, the uh, appointed officials and you know the last committee they had that did this was over 20 years ago. Uh, so I, I can't imagine they're doing this work without the demography that's in the superintendent's office, the policies, board policies. Uh, they couldn't begin to write the educational specs without you know our knowledge of what we're trying to do. But I suspect that this committee uses uh, appointed officials as the workers. And you know, they would request the following information, the demography, the policies in effect. And then, if they're going to build a, any kind of a building, I suspect they would ask the staff to write the educational specs. You know, it would be ridiculous not to do that. So I suspect there's an awful lot of work that those of us internally will have to do. But I think formally, and I'm not sure, but I think it's by charter, this constitutes the committee for any oh, kind of charter. building. And I'm almost certain it's by charter. Is that by charter? That's, a, that's an interesting point, because I wondered what they did 20 years ago and, and how they did it. My uh, first sighting of this, uh, as I recall, was a few weeks ago when uh, I think uh, Ivan Most, the chairman of the planning committee, wrote a memorandum and suggested that this committee be formed uh, and the town council, this is the town council's response to that memo. Uh, but I frankly do not know uh, where the chairman would come from. I assume that the town council uh, chair and myself would appoint somebody, and it could be anybody. Uh, but this would be the committee. The committee would be staffed by uh, whoever they wanted it staffed by, the town manager, the superintendent, the business manager, the principals, the administrative council. They would do the staff work to gather the information that this committee wanted. That's the way I would interpret it. That's the only way I've seen based on experience. Yeah, I think it would function much as the school board functions and the town council functions. As uh, we, uh, in consider considering a policy issue, we call on the full-time uh, employees of the town, uh, the, the school department, to provide us with the information that we require. Mr. Chairman, <clears throat> by appointing a school board member, do we approve of this, the establishment of this committee? This is a draft, so are we, or do we as, first as a board have to approve participation and then appoint a, a member to this committee? We do, I believe. Conditional upon school board approval. Mm -hmm. So I believe that's our first agenda. Well, that's a, uh, do we want to do this? Uh, that's your question. Yes. I move that we uh, participate in a school space study committee with the town council. I second that motion. Okay. So let's discuss that. Is there any discussion of that? 
Okay. All in favor? Sorry, discussion. The only Two thing would be clarification of this chairman. That's not quite specific. Of well, it's the broadest it's possible large, definition. Somebody from at large. You know, it, it sounds to me as if Phyllis Cogsall and I can get together and uh, appoint uh, anybody. It doesn't exclude another school board member, another town council member. Uh, or pre we could even uh, appoint, I suppose, uh, ourselves, one of us. If this is going by the charter, does that mean that you could not add, like if two school board members really wanted to participate on it, that wouldn't be allowed according to the way it's set up? Well, this is still a draft. So if this were to... Yes, I, I think that that's, that's an interesting point, that we might, uh, I unless it is a charter issue, which I doubt. I have not committed the town charter to memory. Uh, but uh, it would seem to me that we could uh, add one or two school board members, or two citizens, one of which may be another school board member. Excuse me, there is a town councilor present. Do, do you happen to know whether that's a charter requirement? Uh, meanwhile, how will we go about selecting two citizens? Well, the first thing, the, the second order of business uh, tonight, uh, or perhaps the third, uh, is to uh, make a public appeal, which I'll now make at this time to uh, anybody who is interested in serving uh, on this committee to make themselves known to me. Uh, beyond that, we've already decided to publish jointly with the uh, town council an advertisement in the Courier uh, seeking these uh, four citizens uh, and people can write in, respond to that uh, advertisement and uh, inform us uh, why they think they're qualified or interested uh, particularly in this subject. And that's not unusual because the town asks for volunteers for a number of different committees that the town has and they advertise for that and people put their name on it. And there's a Are process that's already been established for the, the uh, appointed positions in town, so it seems to make sense. Well, I certainly think, uh, speaking for myself, that uh, if we have two school board members that uh, want to devote time to this very important subject, uh, I think they both ought to be on this committee. You can't. It's, it's hard to think of a, uh, a more important, long-range policy-making committee than this one. Can we approve the, uh, uh, there's a, there is a motion on the floor for the, to, to establish the committee or to recommend that we participate in the committee, but we didn't say what participation level yet, so can we leave that open? Or the, or the uh, structure of the, the structure? committee could be. Because this is still a draft. We no. Well, I think they're, they're all, uh, there are all, all five of us are here, and we have two board members who are interested in this. And uh, John, you are satisfied with your present committee appointment? Yes, I think I'd say okay, yes. Okay, well, Loretta and Please I are fall. also. So uh, I can't think of any other uh, modification that we would make to this other than perhaps clarification, just as a matter of interest, as to who the chairman will be and how uh, the Chairman of the Town Council and I will make that appointment. But I think that could be resolved at a later date. Good. I wonder if we are going to be able to function on this, uh, on the town charter. <laughs> Uh, on short notice. Uh, Charlie, how I are you doing? I don't see anything. Okay. Why don't we just modify it so that uh, two citizens appointed by the school board, one of which may be a school board member? Well, or two citizens appointed by the school board member. Sorry, or could we still have the two citizens plus two school board members? And two town council members. Increase the size of the committee. Mm -hmm. The two school board members and two town council Well, if they want to have two. To make it balance. 
Well, I think that we have two school board members that are willing to serve. Uh, I think they ought to be on it. And uh, certainly wouldn't object if the town council had two town council members uh, uh, that were willing to serve. But uh, it may be a charter issue. And then, you know, you've got to look at it uh, as uh, a committee of seven is a large committee. Do we really want to go to nine? I, I don't think so. I think we ought to just make a change that, uh, that says that one of our two citizens may be a school board member. But as I, as I stated earlier, I will defer to a fellow board member if they show interest. And I defer to Jane. OK. Uh, you did say that, Charlie. Thank you for reminding me. Um, well, we don't have to appoint that, that person uh, tonight anyway, but anyway, we'll uh, put Jan's name at the, the head of the list. Uh, um. Peter, if you're hoping to keep it at seven, I think that when it says two citizens appointed by the school board, a school board member is a citizen, and if they choose to, to have members of their body serve in that position, I, I, I don't think anything, it doesn't need any amplification. Yes. Yeah, I, I suppose one could read it that way too. Anyway, let, let's leave it that we'll leave it at seven. Uh, we will uh, approve the, uh, the constitution of this uh, space study committee. Okay? Right, let's vote. Okay, all in favor? The next subject, uh, Dr. Pelletier, consideration of resignations. Yes, I'd like to bring to your attention a letter dated July 27th to me from uh, Christopher Toy. Uh, Mr. Toy has accepted an offer from MSAD 16 to be the principal of the New Hall Dale Middle School in Hollowell. Uh, I would suggest that we accept his resignation with regret and wish him well. This is a uh, excellent opportunity for a young educator in a brand new school designed for middle school. I move to accept the resignation of Christopher Toy as middle school principal. Second. Any discussion? All in favor? I think we should, the board should go on record to thank Mr. Toy for his two years of service. Uh, to uh, the Cape Elizabeth school system and uh, endorse uh, what Dr. Pelletier said that uh, you know, thank him, wish him well for the future. The next uh, item of business is the consideration of a leave of absence. Excuse me, uh, Excuse Mr. Chairman. Uh, Sorry, another, another, another resignation? Uh, another resignation, uh, uh, Craig Clark, a part-time high school physics teacher uh, this was received, I do not have a letter in your backup, I received uh, from Canada via telephone. But I want to present it to you because uh, we are interviewing for physics teachers on Monday at the high school and uh, board members are certainly uh, welcome to come and sit in on the interviews and those will start, uh, Connie, at what time? One. At one o'clock. But I would recommend that you accept Craig Clark's part-time physics teacher's resignation. He is going to Thornton Academy, I believe. Mm -hmm. Second. All in favor? Is that legally Can we do that without it being in writing? Do we, uh, do we get the, the written resignation at some bring, point in time I along the way? I will bring that to you. I, we've called and asked his answering his, uh, phone for something you know, on paper. And uh, whenever he gets back, I'm sure he'll send us something. Okay. I just want to clear the way for the physics teacher that we oh, hopefully will get. Okay. Leaves of absence. My recommendation is that the board accept the request of uh, Renan Martin for a one-year leave of absence without pay for the 90-91 school year. So moved. Second. All in favor? Okay. 
superintendent's nominations. Uh, the first, uh, before I make these nominations, I, I wanted to say that I'm so pleased that uh, I am recommending to you this evening two administrative appointments that are internal. And uh, I'm extremely pleased with the caliber of these people and present to you uh, first the uh, nomination for the middle school principal, and I'll take them separately, uh, Ms. Nancy Hutton, who has been an assistant principal with us, as you know, uh, very knowledgeable of middle school, and uh, Avita is in your backup material. And I'm extremely pleased to present her in nomination. I move to accept Ms. Hutton as our new middle school principal with pleasure. Second. We have competition for seconds here. Uh, any discussion? Having served on that interview committee, I, I want to just stress when asked the question, what is your middle school philosophy? And she returned with, Curric the curriculum meets the student. And I, and I was very impressed by that, and, and I will support her nomination. Good. Any further accolades before we vote? Good. All in favor? Congratulations. The second nomination is for the elementary school assistant principal. And again, I'm extremely pleased to uh, nominate a veteran teacher, master teacher, I might add, very knowledgeable of our career ladder evaluation process and a top caliber individual, Nancy St. John. Also, there is a Vita attached to your backup material that not only shows her background, but her contribution to this school system for the past 10 years. I move, motion. yes I do, so moved. I move that we accept the uh, superintendent's recommendation of Nancy St. John for the assistant principal's position of the Pine Cove sc school unit. Second. Second that nomination. Good. Any discussion? Again, I sat in on that interview <laughs> also and was very impressed with her, her presentation and I think she has hard shoes to follow, but I think she will do a commendable job. I wonder how this vote's going to go. Let's take it. All in favor? Can you make it interesting? Oh, okay. <laughs> Congratulations, Nancy. New teachers, Dr. Pelletier. Uh, I would uh, like to uh, present these uh, new teachers, Mr. Chairman, uh, as what they refer to as ombudsman. Or do you want me to do it individually? Could I do them all together? I or think you may, yes. All right? Excuse me. Okay, but I, I was just thinking there are people out there, I think, that would like to know specifically who the people are that might be filling individual positions. It might be one of their neighbors. I think, that's, I think it will be one of their, two of their neighbors, I think. Uh, in any event, yes, I think that's a, a good observation. Let's do it that way. How do you want to do it? Individually? Oh, you're going Individually. To say all the names, I'm going right? to say all the, okay. all the names. All right, that's yes, all. That's but important. I just thought we would wait for the vote for yes. all of them. Yes. That's yeah. fine. However, that's the board's prerogative. Yes. Grade two, Karen Court Camp. Grade four, Andrew Lomack McNair. Uh, music, halftime, grades four and five, Rebecca Wing. Uh, gifted and talented intermediate unit, Jill Bell. Special ed, Heather Tanquay. Phys Ed, Middle School and High School, Ronald Johnston, and the Business Education, three-fifths time, Elizabeth Nielsen. This is a one-year position. Also, I'd like to add one addition, which is, I have to find it, Nikki Kaiser will be a grade four teacher. Uh, you have uh, background, Vita, on all of these people. 
I have met personally with all of these people and had a discussion. And those of you who are on the interviewing committee, I'm certain will agree with me. Uh, they certainly appear to be very high caliber teachers. And I'm so pleased that uh, we're attracting these kinds of people. And I'm very grateful to the large number of people who've served on the uh, interviewing committee. It's been a lot of time and it's been appreciated. But it yeah, certainly gives you some feeling for the quality of our people. Mr. Chairman, those are my nominations. Okay. Do I hear a collective motion to nominate second? All in favor? May I? A clarification on the grade two position. I believe it states it's a one-year position. I'm sorry. That's Karen. That's for a leave of absence. Is that the leave of absence that we approved this evening? Mm -hmm. Yes. Yes. Okay. One of the things, incidentally, on, uh, that caught my eye among these very impressive uh, resumes was uh, Karen Cordekamp's dissertation on uh, a comparative study of the Association of Educational Policies, Economic Growth, and Wealth in 18 nations at the University of Chicago, uh, University of Illinois. Um, I think it would be interesting to have her come and speak to us for uh, five or ten minutes. I'm not sure she could sum up her dissertation in that length of time, but it's a very interesting subject. I'd like to hear more about it. Okay, on to the next subject. Mr. Chairman, I don't believe you've had a vote. Oh, a vote. Okay. <laughs> you had a nomination and a second, but I don't believe you've Okay, all in favor? We get official. Mr. Chairman, before so, you go on to the next. I must be suffering the summer <laughs> blahs or something. Before I came down to, to the my camp this afternoon. The next agenda item, back. which is a consideration of a request for the superintendent to enter executive session, I would like to address something in public, ses public session, if I may. You certainly may. Um, I, have, I have a concern which I would like to address to all the building principals. And it essentially involves the supplies that are required of students by their teachers that are not supplied by the school system. I approve of students having to buy some of their own supplies because this helps curtail, curtail the cost of, 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 of supplies for the school system. But, I, but as a parent, I have, a, I have one objection. Teachers will tell the student that they have to have such and such supplies and they have to have them the next day. I think there should be some time frame which would allow parents to fit it into their schedule to, to acquire these supplies. And I think if school starts on Wednesday, I do not think it a long period of time to expect those supplies to be ready by Monday. But I think the next day after school has opened, with all the excitement that, that the opening week of school generates, it's just one more pressure put onto parents in getting their children settled down for the school term. And I think if you could address this on your opening day on Tuesday to all the teachers, I think it would help us as parents and I think take some of the strain off the, the students. It's, it's, they come home, it's imperative that I have this tomorrow. And if you have three or four children, you could be running around for a couple of days every time they come home from school. So it's a concern, and I think it would help alleviate a lot of opening school pressure on parents. I think sometimes that's just the children excited about getting new supplies. True, true. And I think if it was a policy coming from, administrative policy coming from the principals as a, as a unit, I think it would help. The parents would know. The parents would know. In fairness to some teachers, um, I know we've already received a letter telling us that last week what supplies were requested, so I don't think it's across the board that teachers do that to the kids. No, I'm, I'm just saying it's, it's a by teacher prerogative, but I think if we could make some kind of uniform administrative um, request of teachers. 
Mr. Chairman, I, I have uh, to, to just uh, for information only to uh, pass out to the board members a letter that uh, goes to eighth grade parents uh, on this very subject. So uh, apparently, I note the chapter that it says, uh, I like this, the school will provide the writer's source no notebook. But uh, there's a disc there that's interesting to me. Do we provide the disc as well? Oh, sorry. <laughs> right in line with uh, Board Member Greer's uh, discussion. But that mm -hmm. will be, I think we'll appreciate this. This one out today, I believe. I also have one, one question to ask our new middle school principal. The eighth grade class does not know where their placement is as far even as their homeroom teacher. Will that take place? on opening day? Is there a letter going out? A, a letter doesn't go out, Charlie. I think on opening day, they post them right by the way they come in. And it's actually their first period class. Okay, because I know Traditionally, it's been done that way. Okay, because I know the seventh grade know at the yes. end of the school year who their, at least their homeroom teacher will Th be. That is correct, and the eighth grade does not. Okay, just for clarification. Thank you. Are there any other items that any school board member or anybody else would like to discuss at this time? Then I would entertain a motion to enter executive session for the purposes of discussing negotiations and personnel matters. So moved. Second. Should we have a vote? <laughs> Why not? <laughs> yeah. It's tough breaking in a new chairman, <laughs> <laughs> especially in the summer. <laughs>